This episode is brought to you by my friends at Chubby's Shorts. Their tagline is, the weekend has arrived. And I gotta be honest, it does always feel a little bit like a weekend when I'm wearing my favorite five and a half inch training shorts because they have the comfort of something that you can throw on and you just forget all about. With the built-in liner, I get zero tugging, zero chafing, and zero adjusting when I've got the four-way stretch that Chubby's has going on. They're super soft, but always supportive. And I like take these things through every single movement imaginable from cleans, Olympic lifts, squats, lunges, double unders, biking, and more. I've even been working on my front splits this year and Chubby shorts have never held back any of my mobility work. And let's not forget to mention that Chubby's come in the best color combos, all with built-in compression liners. If you wanna go basic, you can, or if you wanna show off your personality like I do with some eye-popping patterns, they've got you covered. Make sure you visit chubbies.team forward slash Marcus Philly. You're gonna find your favorite new shorts in a variety of colors and inseam lengths. Again, I use the five and a half inch if you're looking to purchase what I've got. Make sure you use code MARCUS15 to get your 15% off on your first purchase. All I want is gymnast arms and shoulders. That's, that's it. Is that too much to ask? What's up, functional bodybuilders? The rings. They're some of the most humbling training tools at the gym. If you've watched the Olympics and you've seen the elite male gymnasts up on the rings, they make it look easy. It just doesn't capture how tough these things truly are. They do this stuff with what looks like relative ease when in reality, the effort, dedication, and the strength required to do even the most simple skills is like immense. But that doesn't mean that the ring should be off limits to you. In fact, if you train to do pull-ups and dips in the gym, then I would encourage you to consider working on building the skill of a ring muscle up. Two days ago, I took a poll on Instagram. I asked my followers, how many of you do muscle ups in your training? How many of you avoid them because they're too dangerous or they don't fit your goals? And then who of you out there would do them, you just don't know how to do them yet, or you don't have that skill. And 51% voted for that third category. I wanna do them, but I don't know how yet. Now, for some of you watching this video, you may have been trying to build your muscle up for quite some time. If you've been unsuccessful, then I encourage you to watch and rewatch these steps a few times to really cement in your head how to build strength here. Let me reiterate that, strength in this movement is key. One mistake I see many athletes making is attempting to achieve their first muscle up by utilizing something called kipping mechanics. Now, while this is an effective way to use hip and shoulder power to propel you up and over the rings, if you don't have the requisite strength underneath that, it can be dangerous and you can find yourself getting stuck, plateaued and super frustrated. So let me dive into the following progression from the ground up on how I have coached a lot of people over the years to progress strict muscle up strength. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video. And what I wanted to mention is that if you drop down to the description below, there is a link to download a PDF that is gonna have all of these descriptions of these particular muscle up drills and exercises with great illustrations and photographs so that you can see still shots of, oh, that's where those are the positions that I wanna hit. We put together something really special for you. Make sure you go get that. It's all free if you just click the link in the description below. Before I dive into some of these progressions, let me talk a little bit about grips. You're gonna see me using these white grips throughout all of these progressions today. These grips are called Victory Grips. They're made by the company Victory Grips. I'm a sponsored athlete of Victory Grips, but I've been using these grips for up to six years now in my training and in my competitive history. I was a customer of the company well before I was ever a sponsored athlete. They're the only grips I've ever used because they manufacture them so well and they support a lot of different varieties of grip protection. Mainly, 
they have false grip protection. You can see on these grips that the leather, or in this case, a synthetic leather that I'm using, they have different varieties, wraps around the heel of my wrist and my palm to protect me when I get into my false grip. I will show you that now. But before I dive into that, let me just say that it is possible to do muscle ups without a false grip. However, if you're learning for the first time how to do a strict ring muscle up and you haven't yet developed the strength to do a muscle up yet, then learning the progression through a false grip is going to be a lot easier, infinitely easier than trying it another way. See, performing a muscle up without a false grip, while it's entirely possible, it is just going to be much more challenging. The false grip is going to help shorten the lever that you're pulling from. The other reason the false grip is so valuable is it's going to position your hand most appropriately on the ring for what will later be identified as the most challenging portion of the ring muscle up called the transition. The way that I teach how to get into the false grip is the following. Reach your hand through the ring like you're going to shake someone's hand on the other side of the ring. Then, when your wrist is in line with the wood, drop your wrist down so that it's touching the ring. At that point, you're going to fold your hand down onto the ring, making sure that your thumb wraps around and then you can take your grip. At this point, you're going to drop your elbow down, keeping your wrist resting on the side of the ring. Now that we have the false grip out of the way, there are three stages of the muscle up that I want to discuss. You'll need to master each of these. All the drills that I'm gonna show you today will help train all three stages of the muscle up. But remember that any time that you wanna break down one of these stages or break it out and train it in isolation on its own, you absolutely can. The first stage of a muscle up is the pull up. Now, it's not just any type of pull up. You're gonna be practicing false grip pull ups on the rings and you're going to need to do the biggest pull-up range of motion of your life. This pull-up is not gonna just stop right underneath your chin. It's gonna stop when those rings are touching your chest. The lower you can pull those rings on your chest, even down to your abdomen, the better. When performing chest and ring pull-ups, it's okay to have a slight lean back to your torso. If you can work on a more vertical torso position, that's great, it's just gonna be more challenging. The second stage of the muscle up is the transition. I alluded to this earlier. This is the toughest part of the exercise. You're gonna wanna rehearse this without rings. What I like to think of is the transition is taking your hands from your chest and then imagining that you're ripping your shirt open, kind of like a superhero ripping their shirt off, off their body. You're gonna rip your shirt off your body and you're gonna drive your thumbs into your armpits. That's how the rings are gonna move around your body as you go from pulling up, transitioning into dipping. And that brings us to the third stage of the muscle up, which is the dip. Not just any dip. This is gonna require a very long range of motion since you're going to be transitioning into the very, very bottom of your dip with your hands deep inside your armpits. When training dips to support your muscle ups, you need to be practicing them in two different ways. Number one, you need to be pausing at the bottom of your dips so that you're practicing pressing up from the bottom with no momentum. This is how it's going to feel when you get your first ring muscle up. Secondly, I want you working on deep range of motion and much deeper than you've probably trained in the past. So now when you go to do dip training and you think, how is this gonna help me with my muscle up? You think, I need to get deeper so that I can replicate the feeling that I'll have when I do my first muscle up. The first skill drill that I want you to practice is called rings and bands. Essentially, you're going to hang rings from jump stretch bands and therefore you can use them to rehearse this pattern of rings through a pull up, transition and a dip under extremely low resistance. I've seen people try and rehearse this with different methods, using their feet on the ground and knees on boxes and other things, and none of them are as effective as this simple setup. 
The hardest part is just looping the rings through the band and getting them anchored to a pull-up bar or a cross beam overhead. I've included a few simple video clips here to show you how I get that done, but ultimately you can make it happen. It's actually relatively easy after you've done it one or two times. The setup, once the rings are attached to the bands, you're gonna get down onto your knees. You're gonna have the rings slightly overhead. You're gonna grip both rings with your false grip and bring your knuckles facing each other. You're gonna pull that set of rings down to your chest. You're gonna practice ripping your shirt open and driving your thumbs into your armpits. And then as you press out of the dip, you're gonna keep the rings tight to your body, lock them out at the bottom, and then slightly flash your wrists forward, turning them out. This is called external rotation and it will complete the full lockout and repetition of your muscle up. Practice this many times. Make sure that you're getting very used to the direction that the rings are going to take around your body. Once you have that rehearsed and cemented in your brain, it's time to start going and strengthening these positions with some of the drills that follow. Now there are three key strengthening drills that I love to use with athletes, clients, and members. The first is called the muscle up row. To get this set up, you're gonna have rings that are roughly at hip height. You're gonna place your feet directly under the rings, take your hands, place them on the rings, and then sink backwards into a dipping position. Your legs are gonna to need to remain straight throughout this exercise. Your heels are gonna stay down on the ground and your toes are gonna to stay up. One coaching point that is important is that you should always be staring at your toes and you should never let the body weight shift onto the balls of your feet. Your body weight should always remain on the rings and on your heels. It's extremely important to perform this exercise slowly. Do not pull up fast. I want you to follow the same pattern that you learned with the rings and the bands. You're pulling those rings with knuckles facing each other towards your chest. Once they're at your chest, again, staring at your toes, crunching your abs, you're going to rip your shirt off and transition those rings into your armpits. The muscle up row stops at the end of the transition. There'll be no dipping action whatsoever. I want you to get the rings into your armpits, pause, all of your weight is still on those rings and heels, not on the ball of your foot, and then reverse direction, bring them back in front of you, the rings, and then lower yourself back down to straight arms. To make this more difficult, you move your heels forward an inch or two at a time. To make it easier, move your heels back an inch or two at a time. And my final note on this, be sure to never miss the transition point. This is what you're doing this exercise for, is to develop great control with your false grip and great strength through the transition. The second key exercise for strengthening the muscle up that I'm gonna show you is the banded muscle up inside of a squat rack. I've seen people set up banded muscle ups in a variety of different ways. I like this one in the rack because it is the most measurable and repeatable setup that you can create where when you come back to the gym, you can have a very clear checkpoint as to this is what I did last time, this is harder, this is easier, this is how I'm going to progress. What's useful about this exercise versus the muscle up row is now we're gonna actually incorporate a full dip. So you're gonna get some dip training with this exercise. And unlike the muscle up row, we're now gonna be pulling in a more vertical plane versus the muscle up row, which was a bit more horizontal. The vertical plane is going to simulate really where we're trying to take this exercise into a strict muscle up down the road. Now the setup starts with having a squat rack and a band placed between the J hooks or the squat rack where you would typically place the bar. I recommend using a medium to a lightish band tension. If you have too thick of a band, you will not be able to control how deep you can go into your range of motion and you won't get much of benefit of the pulling action and you might actually support yourself too much through the transition for it to be effective. The second part of the setup is now that you have your band height set, it doesn't matter really where it is, 
all we care about is where are the rings relative to that band? Are the rings above the band when they're hanging? And how far above? Is it two inches above or five inches above? The further those rings are above the band, the more challenging this exercise will be, meaning you will be getting less assistance from the band as you perform your transition and your dip. If you wanna make it easier, lower the rings. Don't adjust the band, just lower the rings down so that the majority of the ring is below where the band height is. Same as before with the muscle up row, I want you to be mindful not to use speed. Now, in this particular strength exercise, when you are at the bottom position, you have a lot of tension on that band. This is where the most assistance is going to be. And it can be tempting to try and pull fast from the bottom to leverage some of that spring from the band. Don't do that. You will miss the value and the importance of this drill. Instead, pull slowly until you get to your transition point. Then use your strength to get your rings, rip your shirt, throw the thumbs into your armpits. And at that point, you can press yourself all the way to the top of the dip. Now the pull-up portion is going to be easier, the transition should be moderately hard, and the dip can be as hard as you wanna make it by adjusting the height of those rings. This is great dip training out of the bottom of your dip from your transition. Okay, the third key strengthening drill for the strict muscle up is the strict muscle up negative. And this one is going to require that you have a decent amount of base strength. So don't skip the first two exercises. They need to be in your training week after week, probably for a few months before you can confidently come to the strict muscle up negative. Now the most important portion of this exercise, just like the others, is the transition. And in, in this case, we're going in the reverse direction. So the reverse transition, I need you to focus on very closely. For setup, you have to get yourself in a position where you can jump to the top of your dip and then lower yourself all the way down in this muscle up. That can either be with a big box that you set up next to your rings, or you can work on some lower rings where you use a step stool or a smaller box that allows you to step directly into the top of the dip. From the top of the dip, lower yourself very slowly into the deepest bottom of the dip position that you can, and pause. From that position, I want you as slowly as possible to lean your torso back and attempt to bring your knuckles together in front of your chest. Once those knuckles are in front of your chest, lower yourself down as slowly as you can in the reverse direction of your pull-up until you reach a full hanging position. Okay, at this point, you are getting close to being able to do your first muscle up. And I want you to feel the success of getting through your first unassisted transition on the rings. So how are we gonna do that? I call this the strict muscle up with a small kip. A kip is simply leveraging some strength and power from another part of your body, like your hips and your shoulders, to create momentum. That momentum is gonna help you get through the range of motion of any exercise that you're performing. Kipping muscle ups, kipping pull ups, kipping handstand push ups, these are common places where a kip is leveraged. Like I said, you're getting close at this point. You've done all the negative work, you've done the banded work, you've done the muscle up rows, and you can probably pull yourself up and get pretty darn close in that transition. And you're likely getting just a little bit stuck. And if that's the case, then we're gonna use this small kip to help you uh, 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 wiggle your way through that sticking position. What that's going to do is it's gonna help you feel the confidence. It's gonna help you feel, wow, that's what it's gonna feel like when I don't have assistance to pull my shirt wide open and drive my thumbs into my armpits. Now, you're gonna keep striving to perfect the strict muscle up. But on this first one, if you leverage that little bit of kip to get over the rings, it probably will accelerate your ability to get to that strict muscle up in the long run. Look, once you feel that transition a few times on your own, you're gonna to start to connect different mind muscle connections and the strict version is going to become much more accessible. Okay, the rest of the progression steps I wanna illustrate are going to teach you how to build kipping mechanics. I have always taught in fitness that you need to develop strict strength before kipping. 
Some would say that kipping is just cheating the movement, but I disagree highly on that one. If you continue to develop strict strength and also develop the athleticism and skill to perform efficient kipping mechanics safely, then you have many more tools in your toolbox. Now, you may never desire to progress further into some of these kipping mechanics, but for those that do want to learn, these are some of my efficiency tips and my progression steps that I've taught to CrossFitters and to other athletes over the years that has helped tremendously. And maybe you want to just use the muscle up in conditioning workouts like I did in CrossFit, and this would be the first step into understanding how to build some connection between hip and shoulder power and a safe muscle up. So I call this the bent arm kipping muscle up, and this is how we're gonna do it. You're gonna take your false grip and you're gonna pull into a half pull up position. This is the half arm bend position. I teach a very simple lower body mechanic. It's called the forward, back, and up. This leg drive and this timing is really key to learning how to take lower body power and momentum and translate it into a muscle up transition. So what you'll do is you'll pull yourself into a half arm bend on the rings, you'll swing your legs forward, you'll kick your legs behind you, and then on the third drive, you're going to drive your knees and thighs and hips up towards the ring. That's the extent of your leg drive. Once the legs are driving up towards the rings, then use your muscle memory on how to pull the rings to your chest, then rip your shirt off and dump them into your armpits. It's the same transition. You'll only have the power of your lower body behind you to get you through your transition much more efficiently. Something to keep in mind is that as you drive your legs up in this third portion of the leg drive, the forward, back, and up, your body is gonna naturally start to lean backwards, and this is ideal. As your body elevates up to the rings, you'll be performing this transition these transition mechanics naturally because you've already learned them. And if you're leaning back while you start to transition, your body is going to roll forward over the rings and arrive in the dip. And this is how the mechanics are supposed to work for a kipping muscle up. The simple continuation of this last drill that I just showed you would be moving to a straight arm kipping muscle up. So instead of starting in a bent arm position, we are gonna simply just start with our arms straight and still hanging in our false grip. You perform it the same way. Legs forward, legs back, legs up. And then perform your same ring muscle up mechanics. Here's the final piece. We've gone through strict muscle up progressions. We talked about false grip kipping muscle ups. And now I'm gonna touch on the elusive, no false grip kipping muscle up. This is for ultimate efficiency and application to the sport of fitness. If you want any of those things, you may want to learn this version of the muscle up, so keep watching. I would highly encourage you to make sure that you have those first two stages in the bag before you start to learn this. Make sure you're training your strict muscle ups. Make sure you understand how to do the false grip kipping version so that you can understand the mechanics of taking lower body and developing that power and that control and that assistance to help the upper body exercise. Once you're there and you're moving into this no false grip muscle up, there are three important things that you need to consider. Without the false grip, your body is going to have to take a much different path and the lever that you're pulling with, which used to be shortened by the false grip is now longer. So mechanics are gonna have to change. The difficulty is gonna be much higher and so what we see is that the mechanics of the no false grip ring muscle up are much more similar to what that looks like on a bar muscle up when you do a kipping bar muscle up variation. Okay, here are the three things that I need you to know. Number one, your grip is actually a modified false grip in the palm. It's not a fingertip grip on the ring. And if you look at these images and these video clips of me holding the ring correctly in the modified false grip, you can see that my knuckles are sitting on top of the ring and that they're not being held on just by fingertips. Number two, when you perform this style of kipping muscle up, because you're not holding a false grip, you actually have a lot more room to push and pull your legs in front of you and behind you. And what I want you to think about is 
Number two, you're gonna push your feet or your legs much further behind you than you did in the previous kipping example that I illustrated and I sh showed you. By pushing your heels further behind you, you create more leverage for when you actually apply your kipping force and your leg drive upward. So on the forward, backward, up, leg drive, on the back, you need to think about driving your heels as far behind you as possible. Last but not least, number three, you gotta get your elbows on top of the rings in your transition. The rings are not going to go by your chest, rip your shirt, into your armpits. Nope, you are gonna go right over the top of those rings. And when you arrive in your dip, all you should be thinking about is, can I get my elbows on top of my wrists at that transition? So keep the modified false grip with the knuckles up, push your heels behind you as far as you can on the windup, and then get your elbows on top of the rings, on top of your wrists in your transition to have an effective no false grip muscle up. Okay, muscle ups are definitely an impressive skill that exemplify body weight control and strength. Hopefully you can find some variation in today's progression that you can start adding to your training today. You may never progress all the way, but after filming a lot of these reps today and these drills, I can confidently say that even just adding the muscle up row can help you build a great upper body physique and tremendous upper body strength. I truly hope this progression helps you on your continued path to looking good and moving well. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up, drop me a comment below on questions that you have about your muscle up progression and how this video helped or didn't help you. And lastly, if you wanna see more of our awesome content coming from Functional Bodybuilding, be sure to subscribe for future videos. I will see you next time.